Coming up on First at Four, Kentucky Power plans major upgrades in the Big Sandy. And while we do have some more wet weather on the way, I can't rule out a little bit of flooding either. The latest details on how much rain and when it arrives coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Well, good afternoon again. I'm Dakota Makris. First at four, Kentucky Power announced major upgrades to the electric transmission system between Floyd and Johnson counties. The company plans to retire and rebuild 14 miles worth of power lines on the Prestonsburg Thelma transmission line. As Kimberly Kagi reports, construction is still a long way off. Kentucky Power says this 14 mile transmission line experienced multiple power outages due to lightning and other causes in recent years. Kentucky Power announcing major upgrades to the electric transmission system between Floyd and Johnson counties. Trying to address the local electric system in the area and replacing transmission um, due to outages. There's also um, violations identified by AEP and PJM. Planning to rebuild the 14 miles of transmission lines between Prestonsburg and Thelma substations and retire to switch stations. But the project team needs your input on where the new line should go. Most of them want to know what kind of structure they are. They want to know where the line's going to be, and, and we can't really tell them that at this point. Uh, we'll have multiple scenarios of where the line could be. Um, and that's what we're trying to get their feedback on. Hoping to improve reliability by updating the power grid. That was Kimberly Kagi reporting. Now, this project requires company officials to file an application with the Kentucky Public Service Commission in March 2024. If the project receives approval, company representatives expect construction to begin in August 2025. The Housing Development Alliance here in Hazard has been helping flood survivors repair and rebuild their homes since the flooding in late July. Mindy Miller with HDA says they currently have 154 flood rehab clients in the pipeline and 28 flood survivors have contacted them for new home construction. However, with Christmas a few weeks away, the volunteer help is slowing down. For us, you know, we do understand completely that folks want to go and spend the holidays with their families and we also know that Winter time is not the best time to be out there um, working and, and doing different things on these work sites. Well, Miller says since the flood, they have had 660, 696 volunteers total, and she hopes when spring comes back around, the volunteers will be back in full force. The Bath County coroner was called to a house this morning in Saltwick. State police say a man died and a woman was able to make it out, but is hurt. The fire started this morning on the 5600 block of Old Sand Road. A neighbor told our sister station, WKYT, the two people inside the home were married and lived there for nearly 25 years. The neighbor says he woke up and saw the flames and then went next door. The woman told him her husband was inside, but the fire was too big for them to go inside. It's unclear what started that fire. Well, we have seen a rather mm, soggy day throughout the mountains today, but here's the thing. Not everybody is seeing all of that rainfall. Here's a look outside right now from I-64 in Moorhead. Temperatures into the low 60s because they haven't had to deal with the rainfall like many of us have today. Not saying it hasn't rained in Moorhead, but the bulk of the action has stayed well south of not just the I-64 corridor, but well south of the Mountain Parkway corridor as well. There's a look at Mountain or a look in downtown Whitesburg under Pine Mountain there, and you see plenty of rain on the roadway as folks are heading out and headed home on a Tuesday afternoon. Temperatures remain in the upper 50s and lower 60s as we head through the evening hours. Areas where we haven't seen as much rain. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Moorhead at 61, 60 in Irvin. Further to the south, where the rain continues, middle and upper 50s at this hour. Where is the bulk of the rain? Well, it's along the Highway 80, Hot Rogers Parkway corridor, and a couple of rows of counties to the north. Areas from Slade down to Beattyville, into uh, parts of Owsley County, now uh, heading towards the eastern parts of Clay County, seeing some uh, heavier pockets of rain. It's not an all-night rain, but you see the greatest risk for that rainfall is going to be in our southern counties as we head through the night.
Timing out the rest of the evening, showers will be with us as temperatures stay on the mild side. Details in a few minutes on when we could see a little bit of a break before more shower chances roll in. That's in a few minutes. Dakota. All right, Evan, thank you. Well, nearly two years after the January 6th riot, law enforcement officers who defended the U.S. Capitol will today receive the highest honor issued by the U.S. Congress, the Congressional Gold Medal. Scott McFarland reports on the tribute to police who risked their lives to fight off the violent mob. She was among the first wave of officers to arrive on the west front of the U.S. Capitol as the mob approached and then attacked. Capitol Police Officer Shay Cooney says not a day goes by she doesn't recall January 6th. Not only the size, but the way they were. Um, you know, you could see the anger, you could see the hostility. Um, so a lot of us were just kind of shocked that something like this was actually happening. With weapons? With weapons. Capitol Police Lieutenant Ted Hopkins first tried to stop the mob in the Capitol Visitor Center before racing to the U.S. House chamber after rioters sought to breach the door of the Speaker's lobby. It's important to relate how bad it really was um, from the verbal abuse, from the actual physical assaults to the chemicals, um, impact weapons. In the months after January 6th, Congress passed formal legislation to bestow medals to the police agencies present, making it a special day not just for the officers who saved the Capitol, but their families too. What the was it like to be a mom that day with your son here? It was, I mean, obviously the worst day of his life, but. I, Without a doubt, the worst day of our life. Kathleen yes. Doby calls as her son, a five-year Capitol officer, still works for the agency, but rarely speaks about January 6th and likely carries trauma from it. Today, she says she'll be beaming with pride. You know, he's very, um, he's very humble. He doesn't like to be called a hero, but, um, but he's my hero. The legislation ordering these medals mentions the officers who died after January 6th, including Brian Sicknick, who died of multiple strokes, and the officers who died by suicide. They'll be a key focus of today's program, which happens inside the Capitol Rotunda, a site of a number of the rioters' attacks. Scott McFarland, CBS News, the Capitol. Well, coming up as first at four continues, check your freezer. Certain brand of frozen raspberries are being recalled. And watching more showers push through the region on this Tuesday afternoon. Clearly, the details on when we get a break on the way. W